kids today. Typical. You say something, old timer? Yeah, I said something. It's that video toy game thing of yours. What's wrong with it, dude? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. Kids today, you're spoiled with your MySpaces and your interwebs. In my day, the 80s, we didn't have such modern conveniences. Our video games had one button and it was plenty. Oh, really? Well, oddly enough, dude, I'm not at all offended by your condescension. Won't you tell me a story about your days? The 80s? So tell me more, old dude, who is a totally different person and completely not me in a different hat and glasses. Well, I will tell you a story, young fella who kind of reminds me of myself, except totally is not me in a different topper and spectacles. The year was 1987. President Reagan was in the White House. The Beastie Boys were on the radiola with License to Ill. And the most underappreciated film of the 80s was released into theaters. It starred John Ritter and Jim Belushi, and it was called Real Men. That's right, Real Men. That was a top-notch film, and the fact that so few people saw it, or worse yet, never even heard of it, is an affront to pop culture everywhere. Well, that's a problem I'm going to try to address right here and right now on... Don't you know that you're a grown-up? No games, no puns, let's not allowed if you're a grown-up. Hello again, welcome to Gen X Grown-Up. I am a Gen X Grown-Up. Thanks for watching the video. So yeah, I want to talk about real men. And listen, my intention is to be completely spoiler-free. Because odds are, unfortunately, you've probably never seen this film. And that's a real shame. I believe that this box office dud deserves to have cult classic status from its era right up there with films like Office Space and The Big Lebowski. This little film grossed less than a million dollars when it was released in September of 1987 and it was then shuffled off to the purgatory of video rental stores. Those used to be little houses where you would go and borrow movies for a small fee and they'd let you take the movies home and watch them on your own TV. We do things differently nowadays. In the film, Jim Belushi plays a badass CIA agent named Nick Pirandello. He's kind of a cross between MacGyver and James Bond. He's ordered to team up with Bob Wilson, played by John Ritter. Now Ritter also momentarily plays an agent called Pillbox, but he's assassinated in the first minutes of the film while performing a dry run for a super secret exchange that's set to go off in just one week. So with Pillbox dead, and no time to swap out who's going to make this big exchange, the CIA computer pulls a lookalike, and that's Bob. Ritter's Bob Wilson is the most milquetoast of milquetoast characters. He's afraid of his own shadow, and literally likes to keep his ducks in a row. The agency itself sums it up best when they describe Bob as... What kind of guy is he? Average. Maybe a little less. And so Belushi's Nick Pirandello is assigned to take Bob on a cross-country road trip. Along the way, build up his confidence and groom him so that he can act as a stand-in for the recently assassinated pillbox and make this crucial exchange. During their first encounter, as Bob is effectively being kidnapped from his own garage, Nick explains all this to Bob. Nick Perrindolo, CIA. And you're Bob Wilson. Now our problem is we're gonna get to Washington by 8 o'clock on Friday. We've got plenty of time, it's only Monday. Maybe we could leave tomorrow. Oh, no, we're going to take a long scenic route, Bob. That's nice. Why are we going? Well, I'll tell you. You're going to have to trust me on that part. Within minutes, a shootout ensues, and neither Bob's life nor his ducks... <laughs> They're destroyed by ducks! ...are ever the same again. Now, as I said before, this film is over 30 years old, but I want to respect the spoiler-free rule, because the odds are, unfortunately, you've probably never seen real men and we want to change that. So this isn't a review. If it were though, I would give it two thumbs up or five stars or the maximum amount of whatever it is that you can give something in relation to how many of them are available. This is definitely one I would recommend. Instead, the purpose here is to convince you to seek out and watch this film for yourself and see if it doesn't deserve a spot in your top comedies of the 80s. So here are my top five reasons to love real men. Starting with number five, aliens. Real Men has aliens in it. Or does it? You're never quite sure. Nick explains to Bob the big exchange is to exchange a glass of water for either the good package or the big gun from the aliens. We have been negotiating 
with men in UFOs for seven years. If we don't get to Washington by Friday, the whole deal will be off. Drive me home. But you can't be sure if Nick is feeding him a line or if there really are aliens. The way he's kind of misleading him and grooming him to fill in for Pillbox, it all just could be part of the master scheme to get him ready. The number four reason to love real men, clown unit. What the hell's a clown unit? That's an excellent question. It's almost beyond explanation. But Nick and Bob come up against a crack team of clown unit assassins. I'll give you a quick peek. Who are those clowns? Holy shit! Clown attack! <clears throat> clown attack? Yeah, it's a clown unit. They're putting in some of the CIA's best agents in clown suits so they won't be recognized. So they won't be recognized? Yeah, they've gone bad. Bad clowns? Clown unit. There you go. Let's move on to number three. The number three reason to love real men, quotability. Real men is so quotable. The fact is, I quote it all the time. However, the, because no one else has seen the film, they don't know I'm quoting a movie, they just think I'm saying random stuff. It's lost on most people, but I enjoy quoting it. Take a listen to some of these. I used to have a pretty good pen, Bob. You know, all flex a small bike. This is your turn. Don't make a big thing out of it. I don't make a big thing out of it. Don't make a big thing out of it. Don't make a big thing out of it. Okay, make a big thing out of it. The number two reason to love real men, finger guns. I I'm not gonna try to explain it, just look at this. Stay close and do exactly what I do. Oh! Bang! Ah! Bang! Ah! Bang! Ah! I think the men in the UFO are helping us! Good, we need all the help we can get. Bang! The number one reason to love real men, dialogue. An action comedy buddy film doesn't necessarily have to have witty dialogue in order to be a good film. In fact, that's usually us an afterthought. So it's surprisingly welcome that there's so much back and forth and banter between the main characters. It's really refreshing. Now that's not to say that Real Men is a gleaming Tarantino-esque beacon of writing, but it's wittier than a low budget film like this deserves to be. And it's what makes it rewatchable time after time again and again. Showing too much dialogue in a clip here is liable to tread on the spoiler territory. So instead, I picked out this one clip to give you an example. I didn't know you smoked. <sighs> Just after sex, Bob. I'm trying to give it up. Well, at least you don't smoke that much. Yeah, about a pack a day. That'll kill you. Bob, it won't kill you, but it'll make you very sore. Right? Now, all of this doesn't even take into account the stellar performances by the actors. You had John Ritter, who was a TV megastar, his series, Three's Company, had just ended three years earlier in 1984. And then there's the living in the shadow of his brother, Jim Belushi, whose more famous and more talented brother, John, had just died a few years earlier in 1982. And neither one of these guys phoned it in. It's obvious that they both took the material seriously and they were committed to a fun performance throughout the making. All of those things combined then result in a lightning in a bottle, sort of greater than the sum of its parts movie, that no one has ever been able to duplicate, nor should anyone ever try. So go seek it out, absolutely. But I warn you, it won't be easy. At the time of the making of this video, it's streaming absolutely nowhere online. Unless you know somebody else that has it, you're gonna have to go buy the DVD or Blu-ray. Now listen, it's only 15 bucks, which is cheaper than going to see the latest blockbuster with somebody in spandex swinging from the rooftops or a remake of something that's gonna squash your childhood memories. And this film is better because it comes with the GXG guarantee. I believe you're gonna like it. So go find Real Men, seek it out, and watch it. Yeah, Real Men, what a great movie. Hey, were you recording my ponderous flashback sequence? Absolutely, dude. This stuff is gold. What are you going to do with it? I'll tell you what I'm going to do with it. I'm posting this straight to the Gen X Grown Up YouTube channel. This is just the kind of stuff those dudes love. And with any luck, the people watching, they're going to click that little subscribe button and the little thumbs up likey thingy. Hell, they'll probably talk about it in the comments below and share it with all their friends on every social media site you can imagine. Typical of the spoiled generation. YouTube is a fad, son. Don't waste your time. Don't you know that you're a grown-up?